speaker is Michael Adams. Michael, where are you? Come on out. <laughs> Michael, um, I think, is the perfect guy to set the scene. He is in his other life the president of uh, Enveronics, and as such, he uh, takes the pulse of the country on a practical daily basis. Uh, uh, the reason I got interested in Michael is that compared to the other pollsters, he favors psychographics uh, as a better, more uh, finely tuned instrument for understanding the evolving character of Canada. I think you could say he is the biographer of the death of a few cherished Canadian stereotypes. And uh, he is an optimistic guy who I think is genuinely excited about the changes that he sees. So, Michael Adams to set the scene. Thank you. Sydney, where are you? You've, you've set a very high standard. <laughs> Moses, thank you. Uh, you know I wrote Sex in the Snow, and I'm here to prove that it's not, a, not an autobiography. All my old girlfriends know that for sure, so. Uh, uh, I want to talk a little bit uh, about cultural convergence. This is a country that is, spends about seven hours a day on radio, television, newspapers, magazines, other content, and a very high proportion of it, at least for the English Canadians, comes from the culture to the south. So my question is, well, what's, what's the effect of this, this uh, inundation of exposure to, to movies, to television, to magazines to popular American icons. And what meaning does that have for the Canadians who are always thinking of it? Peter Jennings said, yeah, we spend a lot of time thinking about this. But for other people in the rest of the world who are kind of worried about, you know, what's going to be left? Is it, are we just converging into the, into the juggernaut of, of the American popular culture that seems to be growing? And of course, with the internet uh, being an American medium, medium even more. So of course, for this conference, uh, being a I was given a little bit of a warning by Moses. I, you know, conduct, conduct some polls. And so I want to present the results of our research. And this is some research that we've been doing on sociocultural change, on values, the deeper values in the culture uh, that motivate us as uh, in, our, in the workplace, in, in the home. Why do we get out of bed in the morning? What is it we're trying to achieve for people? Given the decline of the certainly in Canada and many other places, to deference to traditional authority, religious authority, um, hierarchical authority. Uh, we're making more and more choices. It's making us a more interesting people. That's why I get the sex in the snow, the autonomy, the hedonism, the personal definition of spirituality defining Canadians as we enter this new millennium. So we uh, started this survey in Canada in 1983. And we wanted to choose about 100 questions that would kind of capture what we really believed as Canadians. And one item that I think I grew up with and a lot of you grew up with was an item called the master. The father of the house should be the master. The father should be the master in his own house. A penny saved is a penny earned. Spare the rod and spoil the child. These kinds of statements we want to know to what degree do Canadians agree or disagree with them. So let's have a look at what uh, we found uh, in this research. This is a random sample of Canadians, 15 and over, and we hope, of course, that we're getting a true uh, uh, sense of what people really think. So in 1983, when we asked this question for the first time, we found that 42% of Canadians strongly or somewhat agree that the father should be the master in his own house. That was interesting. Uh, we said to, of course, our clients that year, this is an interesting number, it's probably less than it was, you know, at the turn of the century. We hypothesized that. Uh, we did it the next year, 40%. And then the next year, and the following years. <laughs> and what we have here is sociocultural gold. Because, of course, we've had inflation, we've had uptimes and downtimes in the economy, different people prime minister, different things going on in the culture. But this is something in terms of fundamental social value that is systematically changing. It's called a monotonic decline. Let's have a look at the demographics in response to this question. Uh, next. 
men and women. So in 1999, we looked at men and women, so we've got 25% of men who think the father should be the master in his own house, and 13% of women. Now, you could, if the glass is half, if, depending on your point of view on this, of course, for some people, this means the decline of civilization. For others, think this is the birth of civilization. <laughs> but, you know, say, oh, 25% of guys still believe fathers should be master. Uh, it means 75%, since virtually everybody answers this question, don't agree that the father should be master. Among women, then, 13%. What about the generations? Let's have a look at the generations in Canada. Elders in our arbitrary uh, definition are people, of course, born before the baby boomers. I'm a baby boomer. I'll never be an elder. I'm always going to define the elders as one year older than. <laughs> uh, so the elders, in this case, they're about 55 and over. 27 percent think father should be master. Baby boomers, 17. So there's a big break with the baby boomers. They're born between 46 and 66, roughly, after the Second World War. And look at the Gen Xers, in spite of all the best efforts of David Frum and his wife, Yvonne Crittenden, uh, the, the Gen Xers have not come to their senses, but in fact have taken the values of their progressive baby boomer parents and are even less likely to think father should be the master in his own home. So this, of course, is fascinating because it's showing that feminism, equality of the sexes, is something that's seen as normal in Canada. Let's look at our friends in France, who began surveying on this item in uh, the mid-1970s. So in 1975, 60% of the French believe the father should be the master in his own house, and as you can see, uh, we're now down to about 30% in the latest survey that our colleagues in France have found. So I'm saying, oh, that's interesting. So we've got the Canadians and the French. So I asked the people in Paris, what did you find in terms of Europe? And pretty well, systematically, in Europe, in Germany, in Britain, and certainly in the uh, Scandinavian countries, it's the same trend. Okay, so I'm a Canadian, I'm here in Toronto, and I'm dying to do research in the United States. And we do some in the 1980s, but in the 1990s, we get up enough funding that we can start doing our own research in the U.S. So let's look at, just to review, the Canadian numbers in 1992, the year, the year before... Uh, Kim Campbell is chosen as our Prime Minister, first woman to do that, and Kim is here uh, today. In 1996, again, we found that went down to 20, and in the year 2000, our latest survey, we're down to 18. So again, we're going in that direction. It's not going to go back up, it's going in that direction. It may flatten out for a while, and uh, one wonders, you know, at what year will it be zero, and at what year was it at 100? We think 1913 was probably when it was at 100, and 2020 will be the year that it goes down to zero. So, I've got to do my survey in the United States. Again, the idea is here's the country that celebrates equality, individualism, feminism. This is the place that, right, that deflowered, you know, the feminine mystique in the, when was that in the 60s? So, the Americans probably are ahead of us in every trend. They ought to be ahead of us on this one. So, 1992, just as they're about to elect Bill Clinton. <laughs> 42%. So we were at 26, they're at 42. So we said, well, that's interesting. I asked Dan Yankelovich, other researchers I respect who study social values down there, and they said, your sample's bad. They didn't understand your question, whatever, it's not right. <laughs> okay, I didn't report it to our clients, I just kept my mouth shut. Let's go back in 96. We had Bill now in power for, it's up to 44. So this time, well, it's only two points. This is a margin of error stuff. I couldn't report this. Can you imagine me holding back Moses for, for four, five, six years? Okay, finally, we get in the fall of 2000. The Americans are going to choose a president. Bill Clinton, with his frontal assault on patriarchal authority, to, not to mention Homer Simpson. What effect have they had? This is stunning. This is stunning difference. What, you can do polls on what they think about leaders and who drinks Pepsi-Cola and all this other stuff. This is a fundamental orientation to patriarchal authority in two countries. We've seen three, and in fact, there's about 30 countries that have data like this. And not only are we not going in the same direction, we've got one going in this direction and one in that direction. And we're this culture up here with this undefended, border, which is now, you know, the undefended cliché, 
uh, the longest in the world, and something is going on. And so the conclusion I come to from this is that our presumption of inevitable convergence uh, in culture that will follow the convergence in economics, that follows a convergence in many other spheres, is not necessarily inevitable. Men and women, in terms of their roles and statuses, are more similar today than they were 100 years ago. And yet the differences between the two remain significant. And I think that what we can see here is the possibility that the hypothesis of cultural conversion is something that's inevitable, has been highly overstated. Cultures started differently. They have different histories. They have different institutions. Uh, they have different values. And globalization actually may enhance the differences among cultures rather than converge, even though we're all using the same kind of technology exposed to the same kind of popular culture. Now, I don't know how long I took to say that, Moses, but I think this could be a very significant socio-cultural finding into the socio-cultural DNA, the values DNA of a culture that I don't think the Canadians are aware of, I don't think our friends in America are aware of. I'm hoping that I can expose some of them to this uh, kind of information. Uh, and again, about global cultures as well. And uh, so that, folks, is my contribution to get you all started about what's going on in this country and elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you.